Word. So one of the big things about the documentary is it talks about the narrative or the lore of what makes the gods the gods, right? Like they were undefeated, you know, they had these win streaks, impressive like results based um, resumes, but like you don't really understand like what makes them so good from a gameplay standpoint. So um, I just want to kind of illuminate like first off, like what, um, what, you know, the context of the level play was before the gods became what they were. So, um, you know, as it's alluded to the documentary, Hugs mentions this a few times, it was a very read heavy game. There wasn't a lot of precision. It was basically very simplistic, um, rock, paper, scissors interactions. Like this move counters this, this, this counters this, this counters that, um, this loses to this. Um, so you didn't really have solved situations that much, um, especially in the MLG era. A lot of it was just like, okay, if I think he's going to do this, then I can do this. Whereas now it's, well, if he's in this position, he can only do these options. So I have a game plan that counters everything. And that's what's evolved at the time. Um, so, you know, going back, um, I played each of the five gods, I believe in tournament sets at some point in my career. So I think the first thing that really, really stands out about all of them, and this is really illuminated with Illumin, we illuminate this, especially with Muting at first with Spaces, is their punish game. And right then and there, um, they establish a reputation for themselves that you just fear them, that you're scared to play them. And it's less the case now because the playing field has evened out and a lot of people, a lot of people have pretty good punish games now, so it's less of a factor. But just, just imagine this, right? You're playing in Ice Climbers at Wobbles, right? You're already scared, most likely, to get into the match. You're thinking, like, I can't get grabbed. And then already, for many people, the Ice Climbers player already has a psychological edge on you. Um, and it feels that way a lot with the gods. So with Muti King, you know, when you play him, especially in 07, no one punished like Muti King. Usually neutral game exchanges were done where you get one or two hits. If you're lucky, you get 30% damage. And that's pretty much it. And then it resets to like kind of neutral. And you never really feel like playing against the other players um, that one opening is going to kill you. And so with the gods, especially in their heyday, you just really felt scared, right? Like if I do this wrong, if I like go off the stage, like they're just going to kill me. And that's something that you really couldn't say about other people. So when you're in neutral interactions, it's, it feels a lot more honest against a lower level player with not as good of a punish game, because when you interact with them, you're never thinking on the back of my mind, I'm going to die for this. But against the gods in the like in their heyday, just like, oh, like if I mess up, I'm dead and I fall behind and I'm going to lose momentum and then I'm going to lose the set. So that's like the first basis to each one of them. When are you talking about, you know, Muti King, Mango, Armada, Hbox, PP, like PP to a less extent, he had other, you know, things that made him really scary. But like you just felt this like weight of pressure that if you pick a wrong option, you're going to lose. And right then and there, you feel like you're playing at a disadvantage against them because you feel you start to feel the weight of all the things that you can't do against them because if you guess incorrectly you're super vulnerable and they will kill you off of it so like against muti king if you overextend a bit you do a dash attack you jump incorrectly you do anything next to the ledge like you're just going to get grabbed and you're going to get killed especially if you're a spacey name and so i think that fear was a really big differentiating factor that separated them from everyone else because of the level of respect that you have that people gave them right from the get-go. Um, now, maybe Leffen rose up because he didn't really have as much of the fear and he dissected the game. Um, so that was really different from everybody else. You know, technical skill was starting to get a little bit better, but like it never really felt like I was gonna get one touch by like other players other than maybe Ice Climbers or Sheik and Dittos. Um, so let's run by like the different players one by one. So first off with uh, Muti King, um, I think, you know, his defining strengths are that he's extremely knowledgeable over micro interactions, like for the time. Maybe that's less the case now, but you, one of the big things about him is knowing how um, interactions are going to happen, and especially in 07, he was so much more studied in these interactions that, like, if the games were ever close, he would just introduce new situations to you, and then like he would already have the options prepared and what he perceives the opponent's likely going to do next. And so then again, like he's playing a rock paper scissors match where like he can kill you if he guesses correctly, and because it's an unprecedented rock paper scissors on his opponent's end, like they're not going to be prepared, and Muti King already knows what the scared reaction is going to be. Um, I would say also like against Muti, like every god has like a role that they 
broke about the game, right? It's kind of like TFT when you have a five cost or you have a hero, right? They have this like unique trait to them that you're just like, damn, like this person does what no one else can, or they inherently add something to the game or the round or the match that no one else can do. And for Muta King, there were a couple things, right? Like you just felt like you couldn't play anywhere near the ledge against him because like he just knew so many of the interactions and like you're just kind of trying to play you're trying to cheese him but like he already knows the counter to your counter so oftentimes like what would happen is you might get your one neutral win in the corner and then like the next like two times he will kill you right and so like literally like for two thirds like for like the edges of the stage you just couldn't interact with him at his peak and it just felt so daunting because his edge guarding was just so much better than everyone else's. You talk Sheik, you talk Marth, you watch the Sheiks and Marths from like 2010 to 2015. They didn't edge guard or play that scenario as well as Muta King. So it's like really hard to practice those interactions. And in his punish game, you already know. And I would say like the other thing that was really frustrating about Muta King's style, and it's like really wrongfully, um, it's wrongfully represented in the documentary or when you think of Muta King, you think the robot. I actually don't think his style was a robot. He was knowledgeable, but he actually was a degenerate gambler. So what I mean by this is let's say like he could pick two options that are polarizing where like if he guesses correctly, like he will kill you. Um, he will pick those options. The, the best analogy I can give is the poker one. Like let's say like right from the get go, like you're playing poker and you have the, this $1,000 chip stack, Muta King will just put it all in and be like, hey, like, are you going to call me or not? And he forces these like really weird situations where like, like where if you guess wrong, like you're going to die. And these kind of interactions are very degenerative, but very smart because if Muta King guesses wrong, then like he only takes like one or two hits. It's not a lethal rock, paper, scissors for him. But frequently you'll find, especially if you're a spacey, that he's going to put you in these awkward 50 50 scenarios where if you guess incorrectly you will die um so overall that's like my thoughts on muti king um but you know over time like i think other people have gone better at di'ing and escaping these scenarios or avoiding these 50 50s completely just with better knowledge of the interactions to see like what you could and couldn't do um so i think that that's like probably one of the biggest things with uh, muti king now with uh with Mango, I um, with Mango, it's pretty interesting. You know, again, like you always see, like he's playing fast, like he's scary. I think the tough part about Mango is like I think people don't talk about his punish game enough. Like when you see him play Falco Fox or like Falco Falcon, like he hits really hard, and I think that's one aspect that like no one really talks about is like we talk about punish game as like Armada, you know, Hungry Box, Muta King. No one really mentions Mango in like the the I'm going to punish you and like, kill you off of a shine. Like that's something like Mango does. And I think like what's so scary is that um, against a lot of players, right? Like, and they, they, people will reset very often. And what I mean by this, by this is if you're um, in a scary situation, like if you're playing against like Puff, for example, or Peach, one secret that you can do is um, you can roll away and you can reset an interaction. Uh, but with Mango, what's kind of scary is um, Mango will walk towards you, right? And normally people will, like, most people will hit you where you're currently standing, right? I like to view this as, like, a cooldown, right? When you commit to an action to where they're at, you used up your cooldown, and the next interaction, you can't hit them, right? What's really, like, good about Mango is that he'll run at you. He won't, he will opt to sometimes not use his move. And he will like cover your scare your scared reaction, whether that's roll away, spot dodge, or shield. So like you're second guessing your next play before it even happens. Whereas most people are thinking in the present, like what is the current play right now? Is he here? Is he there? Mango's already thinking, well, he's here now, he's very scared, he's gonna roll away. And instead of covering what's currently present with where they are, he's gonna go for the roll away. And so like when Mango's in the zone, like you never ever really feel like you can reset to neutral or catch a breath, right? Because you try to roll away, you try to jump, you try to spot dodge, he reads it. And then like you're getting comboed again and then like you finally get a moment of fresh air where you can like get away and then you get mixed up again so it kind of feels like if there's a street fighter analogy here like you're constantly if you feel like you're having to wake up and on your wake up from the ground you're you're like mango is constantly able to push the next uh, the next mix up and you're always second guessing and you don't have a breath so that's why like what happens is like with mango like he'll try to break you down he'll try to like break down your defenses to the point where like 
you're going off of instinct and he's reading that instinct and the moment he breaks you is when you second guess your instinct and you feel powerless to do anything um for mango also i think one of his key strengths and this came from puff is um his air his ability to aerial drift almost felt like cheating i think in the documentary ppmd complained and he said like i needed an extra dash with falco and that's what made him pick marth but it almost felt like his aerials and his timings were just wider than every other player and you can kind of see that when he does his like aerial pullback forward smash you just feel like mango covers a bit more and he can escape from more and like these aerial interactions with him just kind of feel unfair it almost feels like he gets like an extra half character distance on his attacks and um i think his reactions are really solid but like in terms of like the neutral interactions like him being able to delay aerials until like the very last second um i guess the best way i can explain this if you're a newer player is um when you decide to like to do an aerial right and you jump at your opponent like a newer player they're just thinking okay if i committed to a jump then i'm gonna do my near and fast fall and like you already commit to your full movement until you land for mango he's gonna jump drift a bit react and at the very last minute if he feels the aerial is good then he'll do it right and i think that's the difference between like just average players getting in that just have learned like the l canceling the fast full and like a really great player like zane or mango is that you notice that they're not committing to anything else until the very last moment and i think most like new players especially falco players on netplay is the moment they jump like their whole movement's telegraphed they will jump they will laser and then land or they'll jump and then immediately near and then land it's very predictable and tele telegraphed and there's no nuance to it um i think with mango like everything is a little bit nuanced and there's always a little twist that he can add that will like put a pie to your face so that's like how i think about um mango and like what he brings is just that pressure and just like that little oomph of surprise i think in ratatouille and gusto like his genius was like that he would always bring slightly something like unexpected to his dish like that's the way i feel about mango and the way he chooses options it's like he's always gonna he's always thinking of something that you're not expecting and that's like that just like messes with your mind um for armada like i think the biggest thing that i noticed was for him was um his precision um and i played a lot of peaches that were like pretty decent like i played against like the second tier peaches quite often you know like macd i played allen in norcal um and so like i've had a lot of experience with peach and like i felt that against like floaty characters the sheik that i got away with a lot and i had a lot of privilege of sheik just like four airing shield and it just felt to me that like I had these really generous windows to attack my opponent where my opponent just didn't have answers as Peach. I think the one thing that stood out for Armada is like his defensive game is so good. And I think in the, um, this is me talking the perspective of the timing of the five gods era. Like <clears throat> it felt like you just could not hit Armada's shield, right? Um, when you think of like the foxes in that area, like Egum and like Silent Wolf and all these people, like they will all tell you the same thing. It felt like narrowing and drilling um, with the way that Armada would shield DI and drift his air, like his shield or, um, you know, SDI, the multi-hit move. It just felt like, like an extra level of difficulty to get into hitting Armada because he would shield and if he slightly messed up, he would narrow out his shield. And he just always knew, like, if you messed up slightly, like he had the perfect answer to like countering it. And it almost felt like, you're this bear you're trying to swipe at him but he had he's like a rose with thorns everywhere where like if you just slightly miss like you end up getting hit and there are a lot of situations where like you as the approacher as fox or sheik or whatever you just felt so much pressure that like as you're interacting with armada who is in a disadvantaged position you felt like you're at a disadvantage because you know that if you slightly mess up he's going to sdi down smash and then he's going to start chain grabbing you and like you're like what the heck like I did five damage with drill and now he did 70 damage because I didn't follow his DI perfectly. I think the other thing I noticed from the Sheik standpoint is like he had answers to things that like I didn't think I existed. So I would like run up to Armada as Sheik. I would jump forward air him and short hop forward air. And I'm like thinking like against every other Peach, like this is safe. Like I have tremendous advantage here, but like he would like anticipate it. And then he would just wave dash back and down tilt me. And then I would take like 80 damage because she peaches down tilt will do like will set me up and prop me up where now he does like up air up air up air like forward air and then now i'm like what the heck like this is crazy um 
And so, like, it just felt like in approaching Armada, like, you always had to, like, add this extra layer of nuance to your approach or else you were going to get hit or you were going to get counterpoked somehow. He's going to escape and he's going to kill you. Like, and that's, like, what is the pressure. It's like, it just felt like against Armada, especially if you fell behind, like, like, you just felt on the back of your mind, like, you're going to have to play perfect. And the other part to Armada that was, like, really hard was if, like, Armada, like, just, like, rarely, I don't, like, I can only count, like, a few times where, like, I felt like he gave up. Like, you have to earn everything against Armada. Like, there's this one time I played him at Evo. It was a tournament set. Like, I was actually up going to the third stock. He was, like, 130%. I was, like, at 20%. We both had two stocks left. Like, I go out and forward air him. He, like, drifts back perfectly, and then he reverse forward airs me and then kills me, and I lose my lead. And it was because I was, like, complacent for this one moment, and I created it, and I was just like, okay, like, I can forward air to him, but, like, he does not give free openings. And that's what's so frustrating is that, like, you feel like in a set, like, to beat Armada, like, he will fight you tooth and nail every inch. And, like, that mental fortitude is so exhausting to play against especially if you fall behind. And even if you are trying to close out a stock, let's say you're at like 10% and your Armada's like 100, you know that one hit will kill him. You just feel like you have to work so hard and trick Armada in like so many degrees to like kill him. And so I think that's what makes like Armada so consistent is that he makes you earn every inch and to like get openings, you have to either play the situation like really well and like almost perfect or like you have to trick him. But like if you trick him, he adapts too. So like you have to have like a bag of tricks enough to like last you a set. And if you beat him in that set, he's gonna study it and like those gimmicks won't work next time. Um Hungry Box. Um, so I think hung so the hard part for Hungry Box is I played him in like 2013, 2014 era. I forget which tournament. Um I, I think it was like a NorCal regional. Um, I think for him, he actually developed more after the five the five god era. But I think for him, he was he's like a Mayweather kind of player where like you just feel he like tires you out, like he exhausts you, right? Like he's gonna back air, back air, right? Um, and the hard part for him, right, is that you get pulled into this illusion that like like because like sometimes they'll be close and you'll be like, yeah, like compared to the other gods, like Hungry Box isn't that good. Um, like I can beat him. And then like all those people who say that in the era just kept losing the hungry box. And the thing that's like really hard is like, first off, like, again, I'm beating a dead horse here. Like all these players have incredibly strong punishes and you don't really realize that until you play them. You're just like, oh crap. But I think for hungry box, like I think his awareness to avoid situations to die is like really good. It's similar to Armada where like he's just aware of your options and like what can kill him at different percentages and he just won't give you those options and that's why like against like many foxes like you'll just see like foxes struggle right because <clears throat> like once you get past the up throw up air percent like you're just having to like bear him like nine times to like 160 before he dies and so with him he has that like that grit um i think the other part and this might be a puff thing too is that like He's really good at saving his reads and his game plans, right? And one of the biggest things that, like, when you, you don't realize until you play against him is that between stocks, if he feels like he needs to change the game plan because you're figuring out, like, he's going to reverse the 180. Like, he has so many different game plans where, like, one could be, like, yeah, like, he's just going to stall back here and see how you can deal with it, right? And then another one, like, game plan, he could be playing, like, more fair heavy where he's, like, overextending on the ground to catch like your drift aways and stuff like <clears throat> the hard part about him is like you kind of go like yes like in the middle set like or in the middle of a match like you get the first two stops you're like yes like i got this figured out and then like the third stock he changes his plan completely and like now the rock paper scissors interactions are like all weird because he's deliberately changed the interactions that he wants to give you and he's changing in the interactions that you have with him what he's choosing so it's like you have this completely different game that you have to play against him <clears throat> and then in the last stock i think this is what makes also like a really good brawl player um, and the reason why i say this is because in brawl um kill kill options are really hard to get you um what I know about the game is that you have to like trick your opponent like two to three times before you can confirm a killing blow on a really good opponent right so so if you notice like let's say like the classic mango at genesis right where mango saved that roll read until the end of game four or like the 
uh, like the third stock like that's what brawl players do like they notice habits but they won't release it until it's relevant so you always feel like okay like i'm at last stock against hungry box this is really close and then hungry box like saves his last reads and then he just kills you right and i don't think it's coincidence that like there's a clutch box thing like oftentimes he saves his reads until like the last stock or the last match so that when the moment comes he will just go to the interaction he knows exactly what you're gonna do and then he kills you right and he has so many setups to kill you that it's actually crazy right like his edge guarding is really good um his throw his throw combos are really good um and like his way that he threatens you is also like solid as well. And so I think Clutchbox comes out because he saves a lot of reads for those like very last stock moments where like he can just pull out like his book on you and go like, okay, you do this in this scenario. Let's just do it. Okay, you did it. Great. I rested you. Um, and so um, that's how I feel about Hungrybox, you know, and that's what's so scary about him. And then for PPMD, um, I think... He you know, I played him at, you know, pound, I actually played him at pound five, the tournament that I uh, played him, or I, that he beat Armada in grand finals. Um, I think for him, it's almost similar to Honeybox in some ways. Um, I think for him, I never played against a Falco that felt like a wall of thorns. This is similar to like Armada, right? Where if you incomplete, like, I, could, I think it's like shadow boxing or like a counter poking or whiff punishing, right? Um, until I played PPMD, like I never was really aware of like people really counter poking where like I would do an attack, but he would immediately like whiff punish like back air or up tilt. Um, so I think for approaching PP, it just felt like I was taking a lot of damage on the offense. And so that was really annoying. Just like beating out PP in neutral is really hard, right? Because he knew his hitboxes really well and he knew his distances really well. And so, like, against, like, lower-ranked Falcos at the time, like, I felt that I could get away with a lot or, like, I could just use movement to to beat out Falcos and force them to overcommit. It just felt like PP just rarely overcommitted. And, like, when the moment, like, I came into an interaction that like, he knew his distances, like, I would get hit. And that was, like, the hard part was just beating PPMD in the neutral. It was having to deal with him laser-controlling you and then him, like, playing in a really controlled space where, like, you're either forced to jump or, like, you shield... And then he plays around that and he knows the interaction so well that you almost feel like you're constantly playing his game and you're always under his control. I think for me, like the only way like I won neutral games against him was by throwing out Hail Marys that he wasn't expecting. And back then, like in like the pound five era, like DI wasn't good. So I did get some like pretty good combos on him. But like overall, like neutral just felt pretty helpless like if i played a control style which is what something i like really like to do is like, i like to control my opponent put them in shield you know contain the area that they're in um and then like i get to read the role or know that they don't have that many options and then i punish them like that's the way i play right but against ppmd it almost felt like i was the one getting it felt like in the same vein that i was the one that was in shield the whole time or forced into a position where i'm constantly having to make tough decisions and the decisions i I could make to like damage him were very few far in between. Like it felt like I had to overcome like three hurdles to even get to have the option or the opportunity to have a rock, paper, scissors where I can hit PPMD. And if I messed up at any point, then I would start over from box one. Like it's like a Nintendo game. So um, obviously there, there are a bunch of other characteristics that uh, make them, you know, who they are, you know, the results show, but I want to kind of give my perspective as a player, like, what it meant to play them and why it was so difficult and like what made them stand out as opposed to like the other players that I played in that era. Um, so hopefully, you know, this gives you guys a little bit of insight to like their gameplay if you're playing against them and like, or maybe you're a new player playing today or if you're more curious about this technical aspect of the game, like of what made them so special from just playing them.